Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Putting on the Ritz, a Facade Restoration Systems Approach. We have some brief housekeeping today before we start. Your phones are on mute. If you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A box in the corner of your screen, and we'll answer them at the end of today's session, time permitting, or via email after. And you can always send questions to mapaydigital at mapay.com. Now, without further delay, I'd like to introduce today's speaker, Rankin Jays. Rankin is the business development leader, Codings, for MAPE's Concrete Restoration Systems line. He spent virtually his entire career in the paints and coatings industry with a great deal of international experience across all facets of the business. During his career in the States, he's been responsible for channel sales, marketing and product management for a number of regional and national brands. He's been a business development leader with MAPE Corporation since 2015. Rankin holds a BS in psychology and an MBA from universities in New Zealand. Now, I always enjoy Rankin's webinars, but today's will be especially interesting because it focuses on a case study that he happened to share with me for Realta Magazine and I know just how well he tells this story, so I know that we're in for a treat. With that, I welcome him to the microphone. Rankin, the floor is yours. Wow, Jen, that's, a, that's a, an amazing introduction. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome this afternoon to everyone out there. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's a, a pleasure to be here, and I will now get, the, uh, get this underway. Um, by way of a, a slightly different introduction, um, to show you this. So this isn't going to be the uh, the 1930s feature film as you as you just saw the introduction to. Um, it'll actually be substantially shorter, perhaps only about 30 minutes or so. But this is a case study detailing some of the uh, conditions encountered during the extensive facade restoration at the Ritz-Carlton in Miami. Just to be clear, the Ritz Hotels and the Ritz-Carlton are separate entities, but putting on the Ritz-Carlton just didn't have the same ring to it. Um, the building and the South Beach area at large are, are quite historic and still attract many of the rich and famous today as it did during the Art Deco and mid-century eras. The Ritz-Carlton is located just north of the historic Ocean Beach District, right there. And uh, the, the uh, Ocean Beach District itself made famous for its Art Deco architecture from the 20s and 30s. However, the, the Ritz-Carlton itself began life as a postmodernism neo-baroque Hotel de Lido in the early 1950s. It's just one of more than a thousand buildings designed by Morris Lapidus. Uh, now listed on the uh, National Heritage Register. Over the years, there have been a number of uh, facelifts and remodels to the facade, but it's unmistakably still the um, still the same structure on the corner of Lincoln and Collins. As you can see here from these images from the early 1950s through to today, there's obviously been uh, additions with um, uh, a few to additional top stories there on the uh, on the main building. Um, I think uh, I, I was never familiar with the the, uh, the sandwich shop Wolfies, but I understand that uh, subsequent to that, we, there was a Denny's on this corner, um, and now um, uh, Walgreens. And again, uh, the swimming pool area, you can see there have been certain uh, architectural changes with uh, the addition of some new top floors, uh, switched out the palm trees a little bit, um, and uh, perhaps even changed the shape of the pool somewhat. But um, as I said, it's still very much the, the, the same hotel. Uh, prior to opening uh, as the Ritz-Carlton in late 2003, the property had undergone a, a significant redesign, taking two years and a report of $200 million. So I'm not sure whether some of those top floor additions were part of that. Um, <clears throat> so today, the, the name Delito is still synonymous with the Ritz-Carlton, and you can see they've maintained that signage on the building as well. The current owners use the uh, the name Delito for their beach club restaurant. Uh, sadly, the hotel closed in late 2017 
following significant damage as a result of Hurricane Irma, but also as a result of typical aging, uh, typical aging process of a building in, extreme, in an extreme environment such as this. The owners undertook a $90 million um, renovation covering just about every surface of the property. Um, the exterior uh, was sounded extensively uh, for loose and delaminating stucco um, with the subsequent scope of work uh, to include the removal of obviously, obviously the removal of the stucco and inspection of the underlying structure. Um, the following images uh, are not associated with the Ritz-Carlton Miami project. Um, they are, however, part of a um, Mapei facade, another Mapei facade restoration project. And uh, what I wanted to do was really um, show what, uh, or give you some ideas of, um, of, of facade problems that we encounter, and that the, they they really do represent the underlying conditions that can be. Uh, encountered as a result of some unchecked deterioration. So uh, the lamination of, of, of stucco over the uh, over structural concrete is quite commonplace. Um, and particularly in our coastal states where nearly two thirds of us um, all live, um, it's an extremely corrosive environment with salt laden sea air, wind driven rain, and heavy concentrations of airborne pollutants simply because of the, the population pressures. So deterioration of a facade is somewhat inevitable. Uh, failure of the facade, whether that is a, a painted finish, a synthetic texture, or even a colored stucco, um, can allow moisture ingress to take place. Then the wet and dry cycling that's set up will affect the cohesive and, the and adhesive properties of the cementitious stucco mix over time. Chloride and sulfate attack, ASR, freeze thaw, they all require the presence of moisture or requires moisture to act as a vehicle to transport soluble ions into the stucco or concrete matrix and, and continue, their, continue that process of deterioration. The delamination can also sometimes be an indicator of other underlying problems. Uh, you know, the lack of proper hydration during the original placement and curing process of, uh, of stucco can affect the suction bond of the stucco to the substrate. Delamination can also uh, be a result of lack of suitable surface profile or a suitable means of attaching a lath to ensure an adequate key and, a and providing a mechanical bond to the substrate. You can see here in this image, the, the, the structural concrete that we've got behind the, the failing stucco is quite, quite smooth. It's fresh, fresh out of the formwork. There doesn't appear to be any any facility for a mechanical attachment. So they're, they're really relying on that, uh, that suction bond of the, of the stucco curing over the, over the substrate uh, to, to provide long-term adhesion. As you see on the lower left though, you know, our recommendation for the application of some of our, our, uh, our mortars, our cementitious mortars, would require a surface, um, uh, surface profile of, um, in order of those those two panels, the, uh, the the that are being held up there, uh, this is um, a surface profile five and six from the um, iCry uh, recommend uh, surface preparation standards. Structural movement can also set up a shear force between the interface between the uh, the substrate and the overlying stucco. And that can result in both the delamination as well as the cracking through the whole, the entire depth of the, the stucco. This image indicates uh, where there may have been a, a construction joint. If you can see at the back of the uh, back of the inspection, there um, appears to be a joint, and this may not have been honoured by uh, the stucco, um, and that's resulted well, the subsequent movement of those two um, structural pieces has resulted in those cracks appearing on the facade through the entire depth of the uh, entire depth of the stucco. The obvious progression of the damage, therefore, is that there's now an easy migratory path for water and soluble ions to penetrate even deeper into the structural detail and accelerate this process of deterioration. When that happens, repairs often have to go beyond just the replacement of stucco. 
in advanced conditions of spalling or, or chloride contamination, it may be necessary to excavate even deeper than the rebar before we can commence repairs. It may also become necessary to engage um, a corrosion engineer, for example, to, to specify some more robust solutions like cathodic protection, as you see here with the, uh, with the, the attachment of anodes. However, this is all you know, a good example of the product and service capabilities that are available within MAPE. Uh, even in the most severe cases, we can create a single source project specification for the remediation and long-term protection, as well as the restoration of facade aesthetics. In the case of the Rith Carlton, uh, restoration was limited somewhat to the replacement of extended areas of stucco facade and some minor structural repairs. But the stucco was um, replaced fairly straightforward. It was it's performed in, uh, in two lifts and a traditional scratch and brown application uh, using a generic cement and stucco mix. Uh, excuse me, a, um, a generic uh, cement and sand stucco mix. Um, this was then struck flush with the existing facade surrounding the repair. Uh, as you see here, you know, this is, uh, this is an existing facade. The, uh, the faulty stucco was cut out and then the, the repair was patched in there. But you can see um, quite clearly uh, it telegraphs through um, a, a, an application of a, uh, a, a top coating. So, you know, the repairs didn't always work to an architectural break, and that then presented some challenges in designing a, a finished system that would blend the repairs to the original facade. You know, in some of these, in some of these cases, the, uh, uh, the re there were decades of, of built up coatings and repairs that create an, uh, created an uneven surface. And you can see here, this looks like a, uh, um, I, would, I would say easily uh, 10, or more applications of a of a high build acrylic such as a, a uh, uh, an elastomeric um, that that um, broken edge on the on the film is probably a good quarter inch thick, uh, and that is just a successive build up of these coatings over the years. Um, impossible to paint over, obviously, because it's it's poorly adhered. Kind of impossible to attach or reattach, uh, or even to feather the edges there. So you know, in some of these cases, it was necessary to to peel all of this back right right back to the uh, uh, right back to an architectural break before we started again. Um, you know, here you can see the uh, the uneven. Oh, I hope you can see the uneven um, surface texture that we we started with on on a on a part, portion of the wall that didn't require the the stucco removal. So it's a, it was a mix of different textures, different coatings uh, built up over the years, and obviously. Um, some some surface contaminants in there as well, um, and then of course areas of uh, severe chalking, uh, which would need to be cleared off before before uh, considering to reapply any coatings as well. So it, it you know really became obvious that there were conditions here that would not support a straightforward paint spec with Division Nine preparation and application guidelines. You know it wasn't a simple case of washing this down and. Uh, patch and repair and, uh, and repaint. So we had to gauge the owner's appetite for the level of surface prep uh, that, that would be required, but that also needed to be balanced with their desire to get the job completed quickly uh, and with the minimum of expense. Obviously they wanted to uh, start generating some income for themselves by having these uh, having this repaired and, uh, and um, rooms rented again. But at the same time, we needed to satisfy ourselves that whatever we recommended would withstand this severe seafront environment. Not only did we have the MAPE brand reputation to consider, uh, we were also supplying a system warranty. So after producing a considerable range of mock-ups uh, with the contractors, and this was reviewed with the owners, we were arrived at a system that was easy to install with the minimum of labor, uh, provide a finish that would best blend with the remaining facade and give the Ritz-Carlton the, the color, the level of finish and protection it needed. Remember, this is a, this is a hotel with, uh, you know, hotel rooms going for several hundred dollars a night 
and we don't want it looking like a, uh, a chessboard. So failing cork joints on uh, on doors, windows, and other wall penetrations were repaired and uh, replaced with a polyurethane sealant. Um, our current pro product at this point is PU40. Uh, it was uh, the Ritz-Carlton project actually used a, a slightly earlier generation of this material. Um, Planetop 200 was used to smooth and feather the transition between the old facade and the new repairs. It's um, not usual for a cementitious mortar to be applied over an organic coating. Planetop 200, however, has been specially formulated to adhere to non-porous surfaces, such as previously painted surfaces, mosaics, exterior gypsum wallboard, et cetera. Uh, it's easy to use. It's a single component, just mixed with water, and is applied in 1 8 inch lifts. A reinforcing mesh can also be incorporated where crack isolation might be desired. And then, of course, it's readily paintable with our, uh, our Elasticolor line. Elasticolor Primer AR uh, was used to prime the bare areas of the bare cementitious areas, particularly the, uh, the uh, Planet Top 200. Uh, this provides a uniform porosity then across the facade. So that then gives us the holdout uh, for the intermediate and top coats creating much better transition between the old and new facade details. Uh, Primer AR is a very, uh, has a high uh, pigment volume concentration, so it has very good hiding. Uh, it's fully pigmented, so we can also tint it to whatever the, 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 the finish coat color is going to be to give you that extra depth of color on the finish. Uh, Elastic Color Coat is our premium high build acrylic coating. Um, it's offered in uh, a smooth and lightly uh, sanded texture. And it was the fine texture that was ultimately used on the entire facade of the Ritz-Carlton. Elastic Color Coat is probably the best high build acrylic on the market today. And I, okay, I worked for my pay, but uh, this is my first rodeo. And uh, I'm familiar with a lot of paint brands, a lot of paint products out there. I do a lot of, uh, a lot of benchmarking with our competition. And um, I think we've done a, an exceptional job with this, and um, indeed any of any of the, the requests we we're asked for a uh, uh, substitution requests. Um, it's very easy to demonstrate how advanced this product is against our competition simply by using um, data sheet information. Literally, this is an unmatched uh, product by any of our competitors uh, for either its performance criteria or its testing. Okay, we can put anything on our data sheets, right? But we went the extra step of actually having these key performance measures validated by the Sealant and Waterproofing Restoration Institute. This is a um, an independent third-party process uh, that, are, that tests our product and confirms that, yes, what MAPE say this product can do, it does. It also exceeds the requirements for MPI product category 10 um, the exterior flat acrylic coatings. Um, some special conditions, we encountered some special conditions here uh, with these details separating the uh, the balconies on uh, on four upper levels uh, overlooking the swimming pool. The GC asked us to address these elements separately. Um, as it was discovered, they were formerly um, planter beds, elevated planter beds. They're now empty, obviously. Uh, uh, but still mostly lined with an old bitumen coating, and they were capped with a uh, cementitious slab painted and re repainted over the years. Water was seeping into the uh, seeping into and collecting in the old cavity there, in the old planter bed cavity. Um, and when exposed to the sun most of the day, the the internal temperature inside those boxes would rise, creating an enormous amount of vapor drive. They were like um, very large pressure cookers. And that would have the effect of um, blowing off any coating that was applied to the outside. So, yeah, we wanted to, uh, uh, well, we were asked to address these separately because of that. Our solution was uh, to permanently and completely waterproof the cat with MAP Elastic Smart, and that was reinforced with our SEL fabric. And uh, it was then top coated with Elastic Color Coat Fine to match the rest of the building. Uh, this would ensure water was eliminated uh, uh, on the interior uh, from the interior, um, 
and it would remain dry. And um, But as a safeguard, we also recommended the addition of weep holes um, through, the, through, the, through the walls of the, uh, these planters. So uh, that would allow the relative humidity and vapor pressure to equalize with the exterior environment. Uh, map elastic uh, that I just mentioned is a, is a two component, flexible, cementitious, waterproofing membrane. Uh, it can be roller applied at 40 to 60 mils wet uh, per coat, and it can be incorporated, uh, can incorporate a reinforcing mesh such as our SEL fabric uh, by applying uh, two coats wet on wet and encapsulating the SEL fabric between those two coats. Um, very, uh, you know, a really good uh, robust system for, for waterproofing uh, vertical and horizontal uh, surfaces. And of course, crack mitigation with the uh, extraordinary crack mitigation with the uh, with the fabric included. Now, by the end of the project, I think uh, all parties had coordinated and executed the, uh, the restoration exceptionally well. You know, these before and afters, I think, really highlight the progress that had been made. Um, you know, when the hotel closed in 2017, about 280 employees were laid off. The owners worked hard to place many of them with other uh, Marriott properties uh, in the area. But uh, since reopening, um, they have actually hired back about 30% of the original workforce. You know, our exterior work was completed by the end of uh, September 2019. Uh, the interior refurbishments were ongoing through to the reopening in January 2020. And that's unfortunate that barely two months into the grand opening, the hospitality industry and our economy at large uh, would come to a, a halt as a result of the, uh, the COVID pandemic. So, you know, the, this huge investment, uh, you know, really only had an airing for a couple of months. And then uh, what do you know? It, it is a shame. But, uh, you know, obviously, as we start seeing things open up again, um, you know, we, we, uh, we hope um, the Red Skullton scene is a, uh, a resurgence in patrons as well. So, um, yeah, so many of the press releases uh, since the reopening have really recognized the remodel and restored services to the hotel, um, are very much in keeping with the, the premium brand positioning of the, the, uh, the, the Ritz Carlton standard. Uh, participating participating in, in projects like this is very rewarding, uh, particularly as it comes after a, a lengthy review and selection process by, by all the stakeholders. I think it's probably appropriate to recognize um, the, the consulting engineer, IBA consultants, the general contract the plaza construction, and uh, contracting specialties incorporated to, who worked on the installation of our products. You know, without, without a collaboration between those folks, you know, we, uh, the, the, you know, the project doesn't happen. But also, I think kudos also to our, um, our rep and CRS specialist, Carlos Hernandez. And, you know, he was point person on the project and made sure he was on top of a dynamic and fast moving decision making process. But, you know, that's what MAPE does. You know, we, we are there for, for the other stakeholders in the project to make sure that things happen on time and, and, and the way they're supposed to happen. Uh, you know, we, we offer these project services. We will help write observation reports detailing current conditions of a building. We can make recommendations on repair methods, uh, product, products and help with specifications. Um, we can produce project color renderings prior to the placement of any of our, our, our coatings um, to give the owners the idea of the, 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 the color change that they're considering. We have excellent color matching capabilities and but literally any color, we can match it with, uh, with any of our products. We've got exceptionally fast turnaround on samples, as well as production delivery with the number of um, warehouses and production facilities we have across the country. Um, we have uh, world-class technical advice on products, systems, and uh, specific application techniques. We can even provide applicator referrals as required. Uh, we'll even provide support with practical on-site product mock-ups, samples, and even the uh, installation training for, for applicators. We'll come back and do a project closeout uh, with um, recommendations on, on future maintenance. Um, 
which is important, obviously, where so we're not buying into another one of these restoration cycles uh, and give a, try and give the the repair the the optimum uh, life cycle. All my pay products are backed by a competitive warranty program, or my pay can provide, as we have in the uh, in the case of the Ritz Carlton, a full single source system warranty, including sealants, concrete restoration products, and coatings. So I promised you that it wasn't going to be a, a full length feature. And uh, yeah, I think we're we're running right at the uh, right at about the thirty minute mark. So um, that's it. That's what we did on the Ritz Carlton. Um, very pleased with the outcome, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And thank you again for for attending this afternoon. It's been my pleasure. Well, thank you, Rankin. And uh, we do have just a few questions. Um, the first, in square footage. How large was the project? Oh, um, just shy of 200,000 square feet. Uh, and that encompassed the, uh, yeah, the the entire vertical facade, including the, the, the Walgreens facade as well, out on, uh, out on Lincoln. Oh, wow, OK. And uh, what percentage of the stucco was removed? Oh, um, you know, there <laughs> yeah. were. It, 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 it was it was strange. There was um, you know large concentrations on certain facades and over the pool area. Yeah, that was that was probably most of it. However, there were other uh, selected um, elevations that we we saw um, some more more or less um, uh, stucco removal required. So all in all, probably about uh, probably about thirty five percent, forty percent, definitely less than half. But it was still a considerable, uh, a, a considerable proportion of the uh, the facade to consider. All right. Well, uh, just a few more uh, moments to type in some questions if anybody has any. Otherwise, um, if you think of any, you can always send them to us at uh, Mapay Digital at mapay.com, and uh, we'll be sure to forward them to Rankin. Otherwise, uh, this will conclude today's webinar. And uh, thank you again, Rankin, for a great presentation. And thank you all for joining us. We know that you have very busy days, and we appreciate you uh, spending a portion of it with us. Um, and we will see you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye-bye.